My name is Stephanie Claussen. Today I want to talk about pain when playing harp. As a professional harpist, I've dealt with some uh, repetitive stress injuries, and I also, for the past 10 years, have been living with rheumatoid arthritis. Tools and resources. Some of these things work for me, and they won't work for you, and I am a fan of working with physical therapists, occupational therapists, your general practitioner. Blisters. My favorite fix for that is tape. This is Micropore 3M paper tape. And I really love it because it's very thin. I use either one layer or sometimes two layers. Sometimes a little bit of the adhesive will kind of rub off on the strings, but you can just wipe that off with your fingers. I've never had any long-term ill effects in about 20 years of using this. So obviously if you are playing a ton of glissandos, you might want to consider buying little um, like soft guitar picks or mandolin picks. The felt ones are good. And then I also like the rubber ones. Uh, and I'll link my favorite down below. Posture and technique. Uh, ergonomics is how you are sitting at the harp or in relation to the harp as you play. Sitting up nice and straight and relaxed without having a overly exaggerated curve in your back or leaning. We often do that as harpists. Knees are not higher than your hips. Your shoulders aren't up here. Your wrists are not here or here. There are actually certified harpists who can give you a lesson on um, your chair height, where you, how to adjust the harp to your body. Uh, another thing that you might want to check out is Alexander Technique. Talking about posture, how to hold your body. If you have a technique that is not great, that can cause a lot of pain. I think the best way to work on your technique is one-on-one -on -one with a harp teacher. Uh, taking a little video of yourself is a really great way to look at what your hands are doing when you're not playing and see, am I closing? Are my fingers pulling up like this? Is there tension in the back of my hand? Also a mirror. That's a little harder because you have to look at the mirror while you're playing, but that's the, the low-tech option. And there are several great videos on both ergonomics and technique, especially Lori Riley recently posted a wonderful almost hour-long video on this sort of stuff. So sometimes you might find that there's a problem with your technique that is very difficult to fix. One option is to have a splint or a brace made for you. When I was in college, uh, I developed a lot of pain right at the base of my thumb here and then started radiating up my arm and actually eventually was causing back pain. So my occupational therapist at the time had that um, plastic that can be molded to your hand and she created a custom brace that just kind of added pressure here to keep that knuckle out so that I could keep practicing and that was protecting that joint. And in the meantime, she also had me doing exercises with this putty. Now, I don't know if you can buy this or if you need to get it from a physical therapist, but it's probably a good idea to check in with a physical therapist anyway. But it's just this really dense material. It feels really good. It's like one of those stress relief things, actually, in your hand. And she had me doing exercises, one of which was just to try and pinch this between each of my fingers. So thumb and second finger, thumb and third finger all while keeping that joint engaged and bent a little bit. And now I can play harp and keep that joint bent because I have the muscles before I was just helpless. <laughs> I couldn't fix it on my own. Another more elegant solution to a brace, if you want something you can wear while you're performing, is a silver ring splint. Those are actually really beautiful. They look a little bit like jewelry and they can just help keep your fingers, various fingers, in a proper position to prevent pain. Um, something that I am coming to appreciate more as I mature as a musician is breathing. I'll write it in uh, the middle of difficult patterns especially. As I'm performing, my hands are tensing up. I can feel they're not as supple as they are in the practice room. I just remind myself, breathe deeply. Having a timer. I've actually started doing 20 minute practice sessions and then I take a five minute break. And I use that break to stand up and walk around, get a glass of water, lean over, touch my toes, arm circles, things like that, rather than just doing a 45 minute or a 50 minute practice session, cutting it into smaller pieces. And for me, the timer helps with that. Repetitive stress injuries. So 
for one thing, physical therapy. That's probably the first step. Uh, talk to your doctor, or get a referral to a physical therapist, and their job is basically to educate you and give you exercises and homework in how to take care of your body. Usually when I think of warm-ups, I think of doing scales or arpeggios at the harp, but my physical therapist recommended doing something that uses your larger muscles, like jumping jacks or arm circles, uh, ahead of time to get blood flow, to get your heart rate slightly elevated, just so that you're uh, warm in your whole body, not just your little muscles. More recently, I've been doing a five minute timer before I even sit down at the harp, and I use that time to warm up my body. At a gig, I don't usually need to do that because I've just been running around for the past hour getting my things packed up and finding the location, unpacking. I'm usually quite warm at that time, but at home, um, I'm trying to avoid just sitting down cold at the harp and starting to play. Next thing that has really helped me is applying heat to the area that hurts before I start playing. So uh, there are two ways that I found to do this. The cheap one is to have just like a terry cloth towel and you get it damp and then you put it in the microwave for about 30 seconds. And then just with that damp towel, kind of holding it over for me, I was having pain in my forearm, my elbow, upper arm. And so kind of just move it around and have it draped there and it feels really good actually. Um, that was incredible in terms of reducing my pain. So with the water, sometimes I found that my fingers were getting sensitive and I was getting blisters more often. And so, next thing, I bought one of these. Same thing, I put it on the area that hurts, kind of move it around. Um, if it's too hot, put a you know cloth between it and your arm. Next one is a little controversial, but it's icing after you play. An ice pack is not as effective as just plain ice, and so she recommended I have ice cubes. I hold them in a towel. You're not just holding ice on one spot. You're going to get frostbite if you do that, but you're moving it around the area, um, and you do that until your skin is kind of numb to the touch. Talk to a physical therapist about this, um, but I did find it, it was helpful. Uh, with the caveat that after you ice your arm, don't play for as many hours because you don't want to be uh, <laughs> cooling down your muscles and then forcing them to do strenuous work. Overall, I found that the heat ahead of time is more beneficial for me personally than ice afterwards. Elbow sleeves. So I was having pain in my elbow kind of here and here, here-ish, um, and my physical therapist said it's a little bit like tennis elbow with harpists. Um, and so she recommended I buy one of these sleeves. It's not really so much compression, but it just keeps the heat in. So I just wear this uh, when I'm practicing, and then I keep it on for a little while afterwards. And overall, uh, it's pretty comfortable. And they make them for wrists and things like that. Knees too, but probably don't need that for playing harp. I live in Minnesota. It gets very cold in the winter. Even indoors, it can just you can just feel chilled. So this is a pair of um, wool gloves. And in the winter, I just practice with these all the time. They're comfortable. I have a number of different pairs. In a pinch, if I'm playing out, so outdoors, I will perform in these just because I know that my hands need it at this point. Christy Lynn has a wonderful video on her channel of uh, eight different stretches for harpists. Sometimes I'm just feeling tense in life and that's when I do them. Just don't aggravate your nerves when you're doing that. If you're feeling muscles are moving tendons, that's a good thing. Um, but be really gentle with your nerves because they can kind of uh, get upset and then you have to wait for them to calm down before they'll work normally again. If you're having a repetitive stress injury, tendonitis, carpal tunnel, things like that, you could also ask your uh, physical therapist about kinesio tape. Arthritis. There's osteoarthritis um, that comes with wear and tear on your joints, often as you get older. And then there's rheumatoid arthritis, <clears throat> which is causing inflammation in your joints. Research seems to support the fact that movement is healthy in either of these cases. You know, the adage is that you don't play through the pain. Uh, if you're experiencing pain, you should stop with something. However, if you have arthritis, either kind, uh, you might just have pain. 
kind of being gentle, listening to your body, but also working through it uh, can be beneficial and difficult. <laughs> I like to do dishes in the morning, kind of immerse my hands in hot water. That's very good sensation on my hand. I'm not going straight from dishwashing to heart playing because that causes blisters. Um, but then in the afternoon when my whole body is warmer and my hands have loosened up a little bit is when I practice. Another very rheumatoid arthritis specific tool that my occupational therapist taught me about is this first aid tape. So occasionally I'll just have one finger or the other that overnight decides it wants to become inflamed and it's difficult to bend it and close all the way. And so overnight I'll wrap it in this tape and I have a little bit here you can see it's the really stretchy stuff that sticks to itself. That is so helpful. I love it. But you probably should have somebody train you in how tightly to wrap it, etc. I love these that have the long fingers, especially if you have rheumatoid arthritis. I found that when I wear them overnight, my hands feel dramatically better. So you can usually buy them at a craft store for knitting, actually. And I've heard from other people that those are helpful for all kinds of arthritis. I have these weights that I don't use often enough. The more your whole body is in shape, obviously, that will help. That will only help your heart playing. And that's difficult for some of us. Injuries. The last thing that I wanted to talk about is if you're recovering from an injury, take it slow, be patient with yourself. If you're doing something that's clearly aggravating your pain to intolerable levels, you probably shouldn't do it yet. Uh, involve your medical professionals in your music making. Say, hey, I'm a harpist. What do you think about this? Also, I would suggest that mental practice is super important, especially as you continue learning and you've got some of these shapes in your hand. The mental part of learning your music becomes more and more relevant over even the physical. Part. And so I have another video on how to practice when you can't play. A book that I wanted to share with you that I really loved is a book called Playing Less Hurt and it's by Janet Horvath. She is a cellist or was in the Minnesota Orchestra who dealt with a lot of pain when she was younger and so went on a journey of just learning everything she could about how to play her instrument still. And I found that book a huge encouragement we're living in a time where a lot of people are realizing this is a common problem. And so the resources are continuing to expand as we go along. If you liked this video, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Also, check out all the links in the description box below. Bye-bye.